we'll be talking about the neuro we'll be talking about the neurological examination of the lower limbs today and i will take you through the key things we need to do um, the first thing is to you know clean your hands and read the instructions they are given usually written on the wall so after reading the instructions and cleaning your hands the next thing to do is to greet your patient and seek consent to proceed telling your patient what you'll be doing so good afternoon sir good afternoon i'm dr Edu. i would like to examine your lower limbs um it will include me moving your legs and also checking for some of your reflexes that's fine all right okay go ahead. Can, I, can i proceed please go ahead okay do you have any pain anywhere i know okay. so after that you know seeking consent and also trying to tell the patient what you'll be doing the next thing is to go to the foot of the bed and when you get to the foot of the bed what you need to do is to check for abnormal posturing of the lower limbs is there any abnormal posturing so you may want to put the feet together and see whether there is abnormal posturing in this case you can see there is a lateral rotation of the left lower limb and this might suggest weakness in the lower limbs so the next thing to do is also to check for any obvious scars on inspection maybe tendon release surgery scars which is not you know present in this case then if there's any obvious muscle wasting at times you might just notice that in male looking the legs and the thighs as well but if you want to be objective though the time may not permit you to do this in the exam so you get a landmark using the tibia tuberosity um you measure 18 or 20 cm up this is like 20 cm up then you measure the circumference at this level of 20 cm so this what you do then when you do this you try to you know measure the circumference here so bringing it out here we have like um, 46 cm then we do the same thing here um checking for the uh tibia tuberosity landmark can you please let me pull up your shot a bit then we we'll also measure the 18 cm up so there must be a definite landmark so do that then check for the circumference okay all right so you try to compare if there's any you no know, difference so it's about 46 as well so the same thing you do for the lower limbs you may want to measure 10 cm down from the tibia tuberosity and then check the circumference as well then the same thing here, measure 10 cm down and check the circumference. However, for the purpose of the exams, especially if the exam is for five minutes, you may just want to have a mere look and to see whether there's any obvious muscle wasting. As you might notice in cases of conditions like um, polio, myelitis, um, then also in cases of some muscular atrophy. Then the next thing is to check for, is there any involuntary movement? which can be present, um, any fasciculations. So there are no obvious fasciculations. The presence of fasciculations will suggest um, lower motor neuron lesion. And this will be evidenced by muscle twitch. So you can check spontaneously, if there is, you know, check, looking for spontaneous fasciculations. Then after that, you can try to tap. So I'll be tapping a bit, if that's fine. All right. And see if there's any muscle twitch. All right, or you can just do this. I see there's a muscle, muscle twitch of fasciculations. So I can't appreciate any now. So that suggests there are no fasciculations. And at times, just see if there's any obvious tremors. So the one way to remember this is using the mnemonic, P-SWIFT. So the P stands for postural abnormalities. The S stands for scars, W, wasting, I for involuntary movement, F for fasciculations, and T for tremors. Then the next thing is to check for the tone. So while checking for the tone, tone is the resistance to passive movement across a joint. So you're going to check across the um, hip joint, across the knee joint, and across the ankle joint. And you must check at the same, you know, bilaterally. When you check for the right, whatever you check on the right, you must also check for it on the left. So again, I said it's the resistance to passive movement across a joint. So for the hip joint, before I touch, I'll tell him if, again, just to confirm, do you have any pain in your joints? No. Okay, so I'm going to move your thighs down. Right. Please, uh, I want you to relax as much as possible. 
So this is to avoid a condition called, we call paratonia. But if the patient fails to relax, then you might interpret this as hypertonia. So I'm going to move that. So I'm going to move your limbs on me, make it you know, free as much as possible. So you can see the, the, the foot, you know, almost moving easily while I rotate, while I move the ties, or while I roll the ties. But on the other leg, yeah, which is outwardly rotated, you find out that when trying to do this, you know, I notice that there's some resistance, you know, across, you know, the hip joint here. Then I'll go to the knee joint. There are two techniques. You can do this and try to tell him, make it, can you relax for me? Let me do the movement. So if you do the movement, I look for the resistance. So that's, then check the other one and check if there's any resistance. All right, so it feels a bit stiff here. Yeah? All right, okay. So that's that. So you, you, I can say that at this point, there's some hypertonia. Another way to check it is to do this. So you, you just tell them to relax as much as possible. They, you know, just try to lift it up. So you find out that the legs are relaxed here yeah, and they're moving easily. But on this, uh, on this leg where you have increased tone, when you move the legs up, the ill yeah, you know, goes off the bed completely because of the hypertonia. So you do this one, two, three, and you can see the entire leg moving up. In contrast to the other one where the ill was still on the ground. So that tells you that there might be some hypertonia there. So you can do that. So there are two ways you can check for uh, tone across the knee joint. Then finally, across the ankle joints, right, check for the movement to stabilize just above it, then do this as well. Right, then the next thing is to check for the gross power. So can you move this leg up for me? So at least he has a power of three plus for being able to move it up and sustain it in the air. Then can you move the other one as well? So he can't move it. So that suggests that the power is not to three. So you have to check whether the power is two or one or zero. So can you move it in or out for, for me on the bed? Okay, so you can still move it horizontally without the influence of gravity. So I give you a power of at least two. He was not able to do this. The next thing is to ask him to wiggle his toes for me. And if he's able to do that, that will be a score of one. And if he's still not able to do that, then I'll give it a score of zero. Then after that, so I'll not check for the individual muscle groups. So the next thing is to check for the hip flexors. That's the illusoires. Can I push my hands up, please? Up, 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 up. So this seems weak. Then can I push my hands into the bed? Okay, this also seems weak. Then can you bring your thighs together, please? Okay, this seems weak as well. Then can you push my hands out? All right. Then the next thing is to do this. I want to check for the the knee flexors. That's your hamstrings. Can you pull, bring your heel towards your buttocks? Okay. Okay. Then can you do the same thing here? Heel towards your buttocks. Okay, that's weak. You can't do that. Then can you push me my hands away? All right. Can you push my hands away? That seems weak as well. Then finally, look at the foot. So can you, you know, press my hands down as if you're, you know, if you're pressing the pedal? Can you do the same here? So that's weak, you can't do that. Can you push my hands up? Can you push my hands up? All right, so you can't do that. Then you check for the inversion and eversion. Can you push my hands in towards the center? You can do that here. Seems weak here. Then can you push my hands out? Out, out, out. So it seems weak as well. So you can also quickly check for your L5 and S1. So can you push my finger down? This is S1. What about here? So that's weak. Okay, you can't push my finger down. Then can you bring it up? Very good. That's L5. Then what about here? You can't do that. So the next thing is now to check for the, um, the reflexes. So the, one of the ways to re remember the reflexes is that your ankle jack, the deep tendon reflexes, the ankle jack is one, two, that's S1, S2. Then the knee jack is three, four. Then the supinator jack is five, six. The brachial, the biceps reflex, that's five, six. Seven, eight is the um, triceps reflex. So one of the things, one of the ways we can remember that, you know, is one of the rhymes back in primary school days when they say one, two, buckle my shoe. 
three, four, knock at the door, but in this case, maybe kick at the door. Then five, six, pick up six. That's for five, biceps and brachialis, pick up six. Then seven, eight, lay them straight. So those are the root values. So since we are focusing on the lower limbs today, so we'll start, this is the technique. You let it relax, stretch the tendon a bit. This is your tibia tuberosity. This is your patella. So you're striking this tendon here, all right? So you strike the tendon and when you, you hold your reflex armor and you let it drop on the, on the patella ligament or the quadriceps tendon, paying attention to the muscle um, contraction here. Can you please let me pull up that one? So we'll look at that now. So I'm going to strike and when I strike, I'm not going to quickly remove my patella armor. So I'm going to let it stay for like, you know, a few, like a second or so. All right. Okay, that's that. Then check out the other one. You know, support it. Then strike. Oh. Okay, it seems some hyper reflex there. Then for the ankle jack, we'll do, you know, we bend the knees, make it, you know, bent out like this. Stretch it a bit. You may not need to put it on the other leg. So this is good like this. Then you strike. Then this other one. Strike. That looks increased. All right. So that looks increased. There. That's the ankle jack. Then what you want to do at this point is also to check for your um, check for your extensor plantar response. You can use your orange stick, or at times you may want to use the tip of your reflexama. So you check for the plantar response. The ideal response is flexor. So we come from lateral to medial in a single swipe. So that's the flexor. You pay attention to the first movement of the big toe. Then the other one. All right. Okay, that's in like an extensor response. That's an extensor plantar response there. Then you want to check for your clonus. To check for clonus, bend the knees a bit. Then dorsiflex and plantar flex the foot. Then sustain it um, at the hand. So we're going to do something like this. One, two, then you sustain it. So if there's clonus, you exert some like flapping movements. So again, one, two. So you see some jerky, you know, clonus movement. Anything more than three, you know, suggests a sustained clonus. Um, so you may also want to check for your coordination quickly. So you can even move your heel on your shin, please. And bring it up and do it again. Okay, so, that, so that's checking for coordination. But if there is some cerebellar impairment, so you might not be able to do that, it will be missing the target. So it will demonstrate that for us now. Okay, let's assume there's some cerebellar impairment. So you see him you know, moving this way. Okay, all right, so missing the target. So that suggests there's some you know, um, coordination problems. Then finally, so that's for the motor system. So it's important for you to read the instructions carefully. So the instruction says, do the motor system. So, that, that, so obviously you don't need to go into the sensory system. But if the uh, scenario says, do a neurological examination of the lower limbs. You have to go ahead and also check for your sensory modalities. So the next one we'll check for is um, the fine touch modality. So it's important to you know, remember the dermatomes, that your first pocket in the tie is L1, the second area, the second pocket, L2, the third pocket is L3, the medial side here is L4, the lateral side here and the dorsum is predominantly L5, then the sole of the foot and the lateral border is S1. The major part of the back of the leg and thigh, especially the thigh, is S2. Then you sit, the three letter word S3, and um, on S3, that's your ischial tuberosity, and you shoot, <laughs> a funny way to remember, four letter word with S4, that's the perianal area. So you check the matum, starting from the feet, then you go up, All right? So you tell him what's going to feel like so you should be aware um so he's going to you're going to feel something like this can you feel that yes does it feel like a cotton yes or what does it feel like i feel something yes. okay so let me can you let me know when you feel it touching you right. just say yes when it touches you okay it's important not to prompt the patient when doing the sensory system examination so it's wrong for you to say something like 
you know, when you touch the patient, it's wrong for you to say, do you feel it touching you now? That's wrong. So you don't prompt the patient. So what you just need to tell the patient is, as soon as you feel it touching you, just say yes. So we'll do it dermatome by dermatome. So close your eyes, please. So just say yes when you feel it touching you. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Okay. So you can keep saying yes. Okay. Yeah. If you feel it, that's good. Same here. Okay. So you know you keep checking. Yeah. Not to you know and make sure you're checking the same area. All right. And you check. So you ask, uh, whatever you check on the right, you must check on the left. So it's wrong for you to complete the examination on the right, then now go to the left. That's wrong. Whatever you check on the right, you must simultaneously check on the left. So the next thing is also to check for a uh, joint position sense. For joint position sense, can you look at me, please? So this is up, this is down. So please, you do not hold the nail bed. You hold the sides. Uh, you hold the sides to get a good grip of your joint position sense, which is mediated by your dorsal column, just like your fine touch too. The fine touch by the cotton is also mediated by the cord dorsal column or posterior column. So the same thing here. So sir, this is up and this is down. All right. All right so you hold it gently. All right. So close your eyes, please. So let me know whether it's up or down. What about now? Huh? Hold on. Yeah. Hold on, please. What about now? Down. Now? Huh? Very good. Then the next thing is to do, what about this, place? So let me know whether it's up or down. Okay. All right. So, what about just say up or down? Let me know. Yeah. You're not sure. Okay, that's fine. So, if he doesn't get it right, you may want to go ahead and do, you know, check at the level of the ankle and tell him this is up or down. Um. So, as soon as it's absent, as soon as it's absent in the in the in the around the first metatarsal phalangea joint, you check for the ankles, then. I mean, to check if the joint position says intact. The same way you can just say this is up, this is down. And you see whether it's able to recognize that. So if that's impaired, that suggests a joint position sense problem. Then vibration sense problem, use a 128 at Sony fork. You set into vibration and you tell him, can you feel the vibration, please? Yeah. Let me know when it stops. That's true. Then the same thing here. So we do the same thing here again. On the bony prominences, you can strike the wall. Or just hold the base of the 24. All right. Can you feel anything? Yes. Can you feel the vibration? Yes. Let me know when it stops. That's up. Very good. Then do the same thing here. At the base of the first metastasal. Anything? No. Okay. No. Okay. Then you keep going up. You can go to the medium malleolus. What about now? Yes. Let me, let me know when it stops. That's up. Okay. Very good. All right, okay. Anything? No. Okay, that's fine. Okay. So it seems to be impaired on this side. So you can you know, set the prongs into action or you can just strike the wall, you know, or strike your, you know, to set into vibration. But please remember that you hold the base and all the prongs. Then, at times, if there's a pin, um, uh, needle tip pen, you can also check for pin prick in all the modalities as well. Um, so I think after this, it's important to know that if the person does not feel the sensation up to the anterior superior lax spine, any sensory loss below that suggests a peripheral neuropathy. But if the person tells you that you know he can't feel, you know can't feel the sensations, and it goes above ASIS, especially if it's affecting both lower limbs, if it's affecting both lower limbs, and the person cannot feel your cotton wool, cannot feel your um, your pinprick or even the vibration sense you keep coming up from your base of the first metacell to your medium malleolus to your tibia tuberosity to your anterior superior lax spine to your cv sternum and the patient tells you i'm not feeling it then most likely it might be a spinal cord problem so most of the time spinal cord problems will have a sensory level usually above the anterior superior lax spine another thing that you might also notice is that there will be weakness in both limbs and be some sphincteric incontinence. So you might get to the exam where you get to see a patient who is on unicaster or pampas, then the person can also move the both lower limbs, then has a sensory level, then think of his spinal cord pathology. So you want to complete your examination by telling the patient, by checking the back of the patient, 
So if you check the back of the patient by asking him to sit up, all right, then you look at the back to check for, so I'm going to pull this up, to check for any deformity, so we to give us, you want to check for any spinal deformity. So that's what you're trying to check for. And you may also want to check for tenderness, you know, at the back. And ask, do you feel any pain anywhere? Mm, no, okay, no. so any deformity. Then you tell the patient to complete the examination. You will not look at the gait. Tell the patient to walk for you to know the kind of, if there's any gait impairment. Uh, at the same time, you might ask the patient to stand with the feet together and eyes closed to check for your room bags, which might also be positive in conditions like um, where you have problem with the dosa column. So it's important to know that the dosa column may date, dosa column may date um, fine touch, vibration sense, joint position sense, and your, and your room bags. So it may be hard to just demonstrate all those signs in the exam. Finally, you might ask the patient to tandem walk for you, that means to walk on a straight line while looking straight ahead to see if there's any cerebellar signs. So that brings us to the end of neurological examination of the dual limbs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I thank, thank your patient. Thank, thank you so much. Then you clean your hands afterwards. Thank you. Then you can cover up your patient, you know, and, and thank you.